This is your last chance for Gladiator. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The season ends. You log off, wondering why you didn't play a Metacomp. You take the red pill. Your push continues. And I show you just how much rating you can actually gain. But what if I told you there's an even faster way to reach your rating goals? It's by using our brand new add-on, available right now at skillcap.com. With the click of a button, it can configure your entire UI and set everything up you need to dominate in Arena, from Gladius to weak auras, custom unit frames, and more. As a Skillcap member, you can even access premium profiles, including nameplates fully customized for every spec, allowing you to easily track debuffs and CC with absolutely zero clutter, giving you more damage and more awareness. We spent hundreds of hours making our add-on to not only save you time, but also to make sure you can hit your rating goals this season. So head over to skillcap.com using the links below to download our add-on today and learn how we guarantee you can gain 400 rating just by using our service. All right, now let's get back to the video. Which comps are the true end bosses of Dragonflight? Let's find out. Right now, the meta is dominated by three S-tier specs. Assassination Rogues, Affliction Warlocks, and Feral Druids are at the core of the most dominant comps of Season 4. Assassination has become the most popular and best performing rogue spec on the ladder thanks to its insane damage output, which synergizes perfectly with Affliction Warlocks. RLD is one of the most popular comps at high ratings for one reason. It simply pumps. The spread pressure from both of these specs combined with the micro burst from King's Bane makes this comp a dual threat. Of course, you could also swap the Warlock for a Fire Mage for some RMP action, or you could go a completely different route playing as a rogue Unholy DK, which was the winning comp in the last North American AWC. Either way, as an assassination rogue, you have a lot of high tier options in the last few weeks of Dragonflight. Affliction Warlock is our second meta titan, seeing a massive boom after some key damage buffs earlier in the season. As we just mentioned, RLD is going to be one of your best comps if you can manage to find an Assassination Rogue. Otherwise, you can go with the classic Shadow Play. Shadow Priests are currently doing some absurd damage in Arena thanks to end of expansion scaling, and the pressure from this comp is a huge execution test for any healer's mana bar. If there was a red warrior of casters, Shadow Play would be it. You don't have to do anything fancy, just pump the meters and let your dots do the work. Now, last time we updated our 3v3 tier list, Feral Druids were running around playing one of the most dominant comps at the time, pairing with a Devastation Evoker and a Fist Weaver. The perfect combination to make sure at least one person on the team gets to have fun, since players are left scratching their heads on who to interrupt. Do you let the Feral Freecast Cyclones or the Evoker blast with Disintegrates? It's a catch-22 either way. While Feral Dev is still good, you still have the options of playing FMP, which also provides that double cast threat, or even Jungle Cleave, which hasn't really changed in the past 10 years. While Feral might be a bit overshadowed by Assassination Rogue as the true flavor of the month, it's still a powerhouse in 3v3 arena. Now, even if you're not in the top three, there are plenty of heavy hitting comps for the late season. It shouldn't come as any surprise that Demon Hunters have their fair share of high tier options, even after a bunch of nerfs, bug fixes, and so on. But what might be surprising is their new flavor of the month comp, Ret DH. This is basically the European version of Ret Warrior and has flooded the region with its insane damage output and its wall of defensive CDs. Of course, Demon Hunters can also play with casters too, as Devastation Evokers, Ellie Shamans, and Boomkins all make a fantastic pair for the class that loves doing big damage. Just like we saw at the start of Season 4, Preservation Evokers are generally the healer of choice in these comps since they provide tons of offensive support and can put up huge numbers on their scoreboard. Now, shifting the focus over to Devastation Evoker, there is another relatively new comp that has seen enormous success on EU, Double Dragon. Yes, pairing up with a Demon Hunter and a Preservation Evoker of all things has proven to be an insanely dominant comp for Dev Evokers. Dragons have great synergy with each other with Double Rescue, Double Knocks, Time Spiral, you name it. Plus, it just has a sweet name, Double Dragon. Sounds like an anime or some sort of finishing move in Mortal Kombat. Moving on, Mark's Hunters have seen an explosion of popularity in Season 4, so what the hell even happened? Oh, they buffed Rapid Fire and aimed shot. Yep, that'll do it. Anyway, with its explosion of popularity during Season 4, Mark seems to be sticking with its guns. Pun intended. Jungle Cleave is definitely your best option, but if you want to be fancy, we're going to give an honorable mention to Thug Cleave with an Assassination Rogue. You could try with Sub or Outlaw 2, but why would you when Assassination is basically 10 times better with half of the effort required? And to wrap up our A-plus tier, we have Fire Mage, whose best comps really haven't changed since the last time we met. RMP seems to be the best overall option, with Assassination of course being the rogue of choice. This comp is going to give you exactly what you need, lots of control, a mix of spread pressure and single target burst, you already know the drill. And of course, you can always substitute the rogue for a feral druid for some FMP. 
With the absolute best specs out of the way, let's take a look at the long list of shooters we have in the A tier. Shadow Priest is another spec whose stocks have skyrocketed in the late expansion thanks to stat scaling. Right now, Shadow can get an absurd amount of haste thanks to Mind Trauma, helping add on to the incredible damage profile of a complex Shadow play, which is definitely at the forefront of the meta. Now, if Wizards aren't your thing and Melee is the move, then look no further than RPS or RPD. Again, the damage profile and control offered by an Assassination Rogue make this comp incredibly deadly, capable of steamrolling pressure through stun silence setups. Another respect to see gains in Season 4 is Fury Warrior, who can definitely play a comp you are already familiar with. Rhett Warrior with a Fist Weaver Monk is going to give you everything you need. Having a Freedom is going to be great for your uptime, and your AoE Fear Removal is going to help your Rhett and Monk deal with all those Affliction Warlocks and Shadow Priests. But if you're looking for something different, then you can go the route of playing with a caster. Shadow Priest or Balanced Druid will be your best shot, but if you can find a really good Arcane Mage, then that definitely works too, as proven by Venruki in his recent push. Of course, Arms will have a high tier comp with Rhett Warrior too, but has also seen success as Thundercleave, TSG, and Double Dragon. Now, if you decide to play Thundercleave, be ready for some long games, but TSG and Double Dragon are going to give you some explosive matchups if you're craving some violence. Moving on, Elemental Shamans have some solid options with LEDH and LSD. If you take the LSD route, be prepared to go down a very long rabbit hole, since your win condition is this comp is literally making sure the enemy healer doesn't have a single point of mana. As we just mentioned, playing with an arms warrior works too, and we're guessing so does an assassination rogue too, because why wouldn't it? That seems to be the formula at this point. Just take an S tier melee and put them with a high tier caster and suddenly you have a good comp, and that's what we call balance. I mean, look no further than Boomy DH. High tier melee, high tier caster, instant synergy. Boomies can also swap the DH out for an Asa Rogue for a slightly different flavor. In any case, your best bet is probably going to be finding a Preservation of Ochre for that third slot. Boom can take a lot of damage, and after those frenzied regen nerfs, you're definitely going to want a healer that can pump out HPS. Let's mix it up though with some non-preservation of Ochre comps. BM and Survival share a few high tier comps, the first being Jungle Cleave, obviously. Now, you might be wondering why Thug Cleave with a sub rogue hasn't appeared yet on this list, and when we asked Big Mechs about it, his response was simply no. But hey, if you want to experiment and play something else, then toss in a Devastation Evoker. This is going to give you a ridiculous CC chain and some crazy bursts to go with it. BM, on the other hand, has a fairly unique top tier comp with an unholy DK of all things. Yes, while PHDK is tearing it up in Cataclysm, it's also tearing it up on retail, but without a Paladin, of course. This Hunter comp is designed to press W. It's for people who like to live fast and die young. You can kill anything and be killed by anything, but that's the fun of it. So be ready to spec Diamond Dice and put the enemy team into a meat grinder. Speaking of DK, we already covered a few unholy comps so far, and if you want something other than a BM Hunter, look to pair with any banger melee like a Demon Hunter, Windwalker Monk, or Assassination Rogue. After a few key damage buffs earlier in the season, unholy DKs are putting up some pretty big numbers, so get yourself a high tier melee and a preservation evoker, and you'll quickly become one of the most unhealable forces in Arena. Speaking of doing unhealable damage, Rhett Paladin has already been mentioned a few times with its regional variety comps. On NA, you have Rhett Warrior, which has been a staple for the past few seasons, now playing with a Fist Weaver Monk for even more damage. And on EU, you have Rhett DH, which is basically just Rhett Warrior version 2.0, this time subbing out the Fist Weaver for a Preservation of Ochre for even more damage. Of course, you can play either comp in either region just fine. It's not like we're playing Pokemon Go here. Moving on, we have our remaining two Warlock specs. Even though Affliction is the best spec right now, you can still find success as Demo and Destro. Generally speaking, Demo does best with another caster, where it plays a supporting role, setting up kills and slowing down the game. Mage Lock will likely be your best option, and you can pick whatever mage spec you like, but Frost Mage might be the most consistent. Then Shadow Play, LSD, and Demo Boomy are also great options if you're looking to play with other wizards. For Destro, playing with a Feral Druid is an appealing option. Once again, the dual threat of Cyclone with a big damage caster means that at least one person will get to have fun on your team, and hopefully it's you. Otherwise, look to play with the Shadow Priest for a slightly worse version of the newest Flavor of the Month comp. Now, there's a lot of overlap when it comes to Mage comps. Unless you play Frost, you're mostly limited to playing with a Rogue, Feral Druid, or even a Fury Warrior if you want to try something unique. While Outlaw Rogue might have been the comp of choice in the last AWC, it's not something we would recommend for general ladder play as your games are going to be pretty long and slow. So just tell your Outlaw Rogue to respec Assassination and you instantly have a higher tier comp and an easier time grinding. And speaking of Outlaw Rogue, it's one of our final specs in the A tier, moving down since our last update. Right now, Outlaw comps are very good at the highest end of the ladder, but require a ton of effort. Rogue Mage might be your best bet, but you can also play with a Balanced Druid or even a Windwalker Monk. 
The last spec on the A tier will be Windwalker Monk, who has seen a steep decline in popularity this season. With that said, you still have a few options. You can go the melee cleave route and play Windwalker DK, unholy of course, but Frost could work too. You could also play with a Demon Hunter for a weaker version of Red DH, or finally find yourself a Devastation Evoker and knock the pants off your opponents every minute. Alright, now with the best specs out of the way, let's move on to the mid tiers. Enhancement Shaman can stick with the classic Turbo Cleave or sub out the Warrior for an Assassination Rogue to have Turbo V2. Since you will be the target most games, your Assassination Rogue is free reign to do insane damage all game. This comp can put out an absurd amount of damage, forcing the enemy team to play on the back foot for minutes on end. Unfortunately, Sub Rogue will be dropping down to B tier for our final update. Don't get us wrong, Sub isn't bad, but requires so much effort to do well compared to Assassination. Oddly enough, Sub is really good into a lot of the meta specs, including Assassination, Affliction Warlocks, Feral Druids, and Dragons. Your best comps are going to be the classic RMP, Thug Cleave, and if you want to experiment, then find yourself a Devastation Evoker. To wrap things up, we do have two remaining C tier specs. First up is Frost DK, which probably has the least amount of comp options in the game. Of course, the infamous Draco Cleave is your best option for grinding out Gladiator. As long as you master those one minute setups and learn the script, you should be able to consistently farm. Finally, the last remaining C tier spec is Augmentation. Right now, its best comp seems to be pairing with a Feral Druid and Fistweaver Monk. Now, you probably could play with another high tier melee like an Assassination Rogue, and we've even seen one team play Augmentation Fury Warrior. In either case, we highly recommend playing with a Fistweaver since they're going to give you lots of damage support. Before we wrap up, if you want to try our brand new add-on, be sure to head over to skillcap.com. We can configure every PvP add-on in a matter of seconds to give you a highly competitive UI designed to make sure you can hit your rating goals. And when the War Within launches, you will be ready with the best guides and the best add-on settings to get you instantly ahead of the competition. Skillcap.com is the only place that guarantees you will gain rating. So what are you waiting for? Get the rank you've always wanted by visiting the exclusive discount link below. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this one. We want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.